Hello, my name is Dr Tim Nuttall. I've been a doctor for around 30 years and I've come on today to talk through the Prime Minister's announcement about social distancing, what it means, what it's hoping to achieve and what it exactly entails. All the information I'm giving you here is from validated, reliable sources. They're all available all night. And I think if we can all understand why we're doing it and we're all doing it for the same reason, it's much easier for us all to pull together because it is the only way that we're going to get onto the other side of this is it is if we all pull together. OK, some stuff, you know, the virus is caught when someone who has it coughs or touches something and the droplets infect someone else, either breathed in probably or either touched on a surface which is why you have to keep washing your hands. This person is then able to infect others because this virus, unlike the normal flu, doesn't give you symptoms straight away of feeling unwell. They don't normally come up until around four days. Statistically, 95% of everyone has symptoms by day six, 98% by day 11, everyone by day 14. People are most contagious when they're sick and particularly when they're coughing. Because it's a new virus, there's no immunity existing in the community. And so it's more contagious than normal flu. It's this long incubation period and the fact that in this time you're contagious without knowing it is the basis of social distancing. If we do nothing and don't apply the rules of social distancing, each person statistically will infect two others. This will result in a doubling of numbers every two days. At first the spread is slow, but very quickly this speeds up and the infected numbers get very large very quickly. But with the flu from COVID-19, the death rate is in the area of about one to three percent. Most deaths are mainly confined to the elderly and especially those with underlying conditions. In Italy, 85% of the deaths were in the over 70s. The remaining getting much milder symptoms and in some cases hardly, hardly any at all. And when I say getting hardly any symptoms at all, that's hopefully. Because what the World Health Organization is saying from cases in China, that 15% were critical and 5% were life-threatening. And all those hospitalised, 40% of them were under 55 and 5% ended up in ICU, intensive care. The issue here is solely about numbers. Though we're trying to increase the resources, there is a finite number of nurses, doctors, drugs, beds and particularly intensive care beds. Most people will be okay. But if large numbers of people are sick at the same time, those 14% severe cases, 5% critical cases, will take up all of the resources, potentially leaving those 5% who do need to go to ITU and would be due to come out without that option and with a much less favourable outcome. We may well be on the steepening part of this curve and heading towards this saturation point of the health service being able to manage, and potentially the death rate being higher if we get above it. Social distancing will slow down this spread. This has been to be the only thing that has worked in China and in Italy and not have to be in a situation where we have to make choices about who lives and who dies. By social distancing, we can slow down and hopefully stop this spread and save lives. We all have to understand that this isn't a problem only for those at risk. Left unchecked, this will wreak havoc on every facet of our lives and not leave anyone untouched. So I beg you to take it seriously and follow the guidelines. This is a time for us all to be taking this seriously because it is all of our problem. So let's be a part of the solution together, not part of the problem. I'm planning to post a video tomorrow about what exactly social distancing means. So if you want to subscribe to this channel, you'll see it when it comes up. So in the meantime, stay in, only have essential contact with those outside of your household. And for everyone's sake, please stay well. See you tomorrow.